Now, right now, we're going to do some um, probability distribution things, uh, except we're going to do it over a simulation. We're going to do it with dice rolls. First of all, we're going to get all the columns to be a lot narrower so that we can work inside them a little better. And then uh, we shall uh, put a truncate command, T-R-U-N-C, inside uh, A1. And uh, what we'll pass into it is uh, the result of a random function. So we're going to truncate the decimal part of a random number. But since it's all decimal, we're going to multiply it by 6. That will give us a number between 0 and 5, uh, 0 and 5.99999 repeating. And when that, um, when that decimal is truncated or chopped off, uh, it will give us integers, whole numbers, between 0 and 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, that's six possible numbers. To make this an actual dice roll from 1 to 6, we're going to add 1 to this. So we'll just put plus 1. Now we'll have the values from 1 to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And let's hit Enter and uh, see what our dice roll is. We just rolled a 4 and we're going to take this same formula and by dragging the little corner box we're just going to drag it across five columns and this like rolling a dice five times or rolling five dice and we're going to do this 16 times. That's a total of 80 dice rolls and you can see that all of the numbers are 1, two, one, one through 6 and they all use the identical formula exactly as I typed it in every single cell. So um, as a result I got a bunch of very different numbers. Well if I can do this to um, 16 rows I can certainly do it to a couple of thousand. I think I am going to extend this down to 2000. Um, I find that uh, if I do this for too many rolls actually um, it starts interfering with the sound quality so um, I'm going to go as far as 2,000. Uh, I did go to 3,000 before. Um, but 2,000 actually gives us 10,000 dice rolls. And I think for, for most of us, that would be uh, plenty of dice rolls. And uh, we're going to see if this distribution is uniform. Do we get an even number of 1s through 6s? Um, so we'll just type in the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And uh, now we're going to count the occurrences of these numbers in the dice rolls we attempted. So for the first one, we're just going to type in a COUNTIF statement, followed by uh, the parameters uh, given, like the cell ranges. We're going to talk about the cell ranges and then uh, the number we're counting. In this, this case, the number of occurrences of the number 1, since we're right beside the number 1 in cell G1. And we'll just uh, refer to that refer to that cell just as G1. And that, allows, that will allow us to paste these, um, these formulas onto cells H1 all the way to H6, rather than having to type the same formula six times. Okay, so we got 1,652 occurrences of the number 1. Sounds convincing. Sounds like a good fraction of 10,000. And uh, let's just drag them out for all the others. And it, it appears as though they all appear exactly equal numbers of times. So that's because the cells haven't updated. And here they've updated as I was talking. And uh, these are the frequencies. Now, if we count the frequencies, if we count all the total number of frequencies of, of that whole column, we ought to get 10,000. But before I do that, let's just make this a proper table. Uh, maybe G column G could be the value of the dice roll. H could be its frequency. And we'll make a new column I, which will uh, give us something a little more meaningful. And that would be the relative frequency. So the frequency, um, the total frequency ought to be 10,000, as I said. So I'm just going to do a sum. I'm going to select my cell range and close my bracket and see what I get. 9,984. doesn't sound like 10,000 to me. And, uh, well, there's a problem here. Uh, we can check, I suppose, to make sure that we actually have... 
2,000 attempts uh, with five columns. And it turns out that's exactly what we have. So let's scroll back and um, let's see what we did wrong with the formulas. The mistake must be in the formulas we typed in. So I'll do the first one. Well, uh, we're going from A1 to E2000, which sounds right. And we're using the value in cell G2. This one is FA2 to E2001. Hmm. It's starting in the wrong row, and it's ending one row too late, which means that there's some blank cells being counted. And, of course, they won't be counted, which is why maybe this count will be low. So let's put dollar signs in front of our uh, cell references uh, from A1 to E2000 because we don't want that to change. The G2 we do want to change because they're the value of our dice roll. So let's just hit enter. And let's do the same thing now uh, by dragging the little square below and um, let's get the new totals and notice that the uh, cross hatches are now obfuscating the uh, total of uh, total frequency and once we widen the column we see the total frequency is actually 10,000 is 10,000 exactly well that's supposed to be um, the correct and only answer we ought to get with 10,000 attempts so um, and we can check our formulas. The formulas are all correct. They're all the formulas they ought to be. And notice that A1 to E2000 never move. The only thing that changes is the reference to the appropriate value under column G. So let's take the relative frequency. So the value in H2 divided by the value in H9. But we want an absolute cell reference to avoid the same mistake uh, of uh, referencing. So now we want dollar sign $H, dollar sign $9. And we hit enter. And then we can also um, take the little square on the bottom uh, left corner and drag it all the way down to get our... Uh, but not before, of course, we widen the column because we want to see um, what other numbers are there. And here we go. So we've got to wait for it to update. There we go. And uh, the total uh, relative frequency, the total of this column, ought to be 1 uh, because these now map onto probabilities. And if you can notice, all of these numbers are 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, mostly 0 0.16, which is approximately equal to 1 over 6. So it looks as though we have what appears to be uniform frequency, but there, is there a point you get to where we can no longer say that this is uh, a normal frequency? Is there a point you get to, you know? Um, and, you know, we could try several attempts, updating the entire spreadsheet several times, and we can actually come up with many different numbers that uh, could also uh, work in the distribution. Well, you know, and for example, 0.1713, is that number too high? Um, or, you know, even if it was 0.172 or 0.173, how far away from 0.16666 repeating do we need to get to finally say that the number is too high? Or, conversely, too low. What if we get something beginning in 1.5? Is that too low? And is there such a thing as too low when the numbers are supposed to be random? So there's this definition of randomness that maybe you're going to need to research and uh, so on if you choose to do a simulation based on this and of course the number of samples possible are infinite and uh, anyway the um, this could be a possible topic for an ISU and uh, because the ISUs do involve simulations as much as they involve statistics or things like um, 
things like uh, games, for example. And anyway, that's, uh, that's it for now.